What is up everybody, welcome back to Case Digital. My name is Zach and in today's video we're answering the question of what does strip do in Python? And as a use case, we're gonna leverage these two, or these three strings and show what the function of strip does with in, re, in regards to strings with Python. So without further ado, let's hop right in and start coding. So what does strip do? Well, if you've seen any of my previous videos, which I'll link kind of up here in the description below, we've been talking about, or I've, I've shared how there's you know the functions such as L strip and R strip. And in L strip, it removes it, the leading white space or specified characters from the left or the beginning part of the string. And if it's R strip, it then removes it from the the right or the rear part of the string. So strip though, removes it from both. And now let's hop in and show kind of what that does. If I want to use this, I can go simply here and we'll print this out. We'll make this an F string and then we'll just say string one, oops, one dot strip. Wow, there we go. Strip and then equals that. So that'll print out our, our string. So we'll go ahead and we'll just do these one at a time. But let's start with, that's that one and then three there. All right, so comment this out and then we'll just go and we'll start with, well, what happens if I just have a string that looks like this, hello world, where there's no white space characters on either side of the string? Well, if I go ahead and I run that and you'll see that string one, it just prints out hello world and it looks exactly the same as you would expect, right? So what happens though if I go ahead and I do string two where there's a leading white space, right? There's one leading white space. And so if I go ahead and rerun this with strip there, then you'll see that now strip or string one and string two look identical because what happened is, is strip removed the left hand side, right? It removed all that extra white space. Now we have this string three where we have all of this white space that's on the right hand side, right? And it's got all the sorts of white space characters. You got regular white space, just spaces. You got new lines, tabs, return characters. So if I go ahead and run string three, you'll see that now strings one through three all look identical. It removed that extra white space, right? So now again, I've showed this in my previous video when I was talking about right strip and I'm gonna do another string example here in a sec. But before we get to that, if I put a character in here, I'm just gonna put like an E for just for fun, right? What we should see is that if it's removing it from all white space characters and specified characters, and I'll get to that here in a minute. If it's removing those from the string, what we should see is that this should be the return value of strip, right? And then all of this, whoops, all of this should basically be removed. So if I go ahead and rerun that, you'll see that string three now looks different and looks as we expect, right? Because it's only gonna remove from the from the, the start or end, and or end of the um, string if it's there. And so, and again, this is part of the string because there is a specified character and there's this isn't white space. It's not a white space character. So that's why we end up with something like that. So now if I go ahead and remove that, now let's go ahead and let's copy string three and let's go and do, we'll call this string four. Now I'm gonna put something like a new line here. I'm gonna put a tab at the beginning, maybe a couple spaces. And I'm gonna go ahead and print this out. So what you'll see here is now I've added it at the very beginning and at the end. So string four has white space characters at the beginning and the end. And if strip works how I said it should work, um, and how the document specifies it should work, you should end up with all four of these strings now looking exactly the same, just like um, these two right here. So if we'll go ahead, rerun that, and just like that, they all look the same. It removed the white space characters and from both the front and the back. And that's the point of strip. So now let's talk about removing or how it can help remove specified characters from the front or the end. All right, so let's talk about how you can use strip to help remove um, characters from a string, but it's only gonna be from the beginning or the end. It's not gonna be um, in the middle, like something like you would see with like the replace function where it'll go through and iterate through that string, find the specific substring and then remove it out, whether that's with an empty or replace it. Um, whether that's with a uh, an empty character or an empty string or another thing or another you know set of characters, what this will do is if we if we look at what the documentation says, it returns again a copy of a string with the leading and trailing white spaces removed. That's just what happens to strip normally when you don't put anything in the parameters, right? But if you put parameter in, if chars are given or a string of characters are given, it, and it's not none, like it's going to remove the characters within the chars instead. It's not gonna, but it's not gonna do it like within, like I mentioned, it's gonna only do it from the beginning and end. Now, let's talk about this. What does that mean? And as a side note here, like when I go to put this fun, like this set of characters in, I need to use this type of quotation just because I'm in this F string. And because I'm in this F string and I use a single quote, that means the inner quotes have to be double string. Because if you do something like this, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna use an L as an example and I run this, which you'll see is it'll get an error 
because it's just saying, hey, your F string is unmatched because it thinks that the F string ended here and now you've got a whole bunch of stuff that's messed up. And so it's just saying, hey, you need to, if you see something like that, just remember like switch to this or, and the same is true if you're this way, right? If, you're, if your quotes are this way, then inside it needs to be, the, the inner quote has to be in a, the, you know, the one string, right? So this should work. We'll just leave it here for now. But uh, um, if I rerun this, you'll see that everything should just look at uh, like like it did. It should look like Hello World. It looks the exact same thing. Nothing got removed. Well, I said to strip out the L. Again, it only works if the L is at the very beginning. So what happens if I do H, capital H, right? Because if I, we'll do this one, for, well, we'll do this one first. We'll do a lowercase H. If I go ahead and run this. You'll see that Hello world, it's all the same. It's because there's not a there's not a lowercase h at the beginning. Now, if we go back in here and we have capital H, what this will do is because the capital H is at the beginning, it'll remove it. But here's something fun. What if I say, I, I wanna remove the, I want to strip out from the very beginning and from the very end, the capital H, uh, a lowercase h, a d, and a capital D, right? If I were to go ahead and rerun this, what you'll see is it removed both the h, got removed, and the d. And it's just saying, I'm going through and I'm removing these characters. It doesn't matter where they are um, as long as they're at the beginning. But here's one thing, here's something that's kind of interesting that I thought was kind of cool is if I say, and I also remove an E and an L and an L, oops, E and an L, um, and we'll do an R. What do you think is going to remove? Like we'll take a little pause here, let you, let you guess. But if I want to strip out these characters, H, capital H, lowercase H, capital D, lowercase D, capital E, lowercase E, capital L, lowercase L, and R, well, that's at the beginning, we know that's gonna be removed. That's at the beginning, and or the end, so that should probably be removed. But like, will anything else get removed because they're interior? Well, let's take a look. As you see, we're left with a string that is the result of just like, oh, comma, whoa. <laughs> You know, um, it's because what happens is is it's going to go through and strip out all these characters. But that means that like if you st if you strip out um, if you strip out this H, well then now that means the E is at the very beginning. Well then we're stripping out an E, and then well that means the E is now going to be removed. And we strip out an L. Well there's two L's. There's an L, so it's going to remove those. And then we're doing an R, and then we're left with just this. Oops, we're left with um, just this substring right there. Right. So you see how that works. So does order matter? Well, let's find out. So we know that H is at the, the end and D is at the end. So let's take one of these things. Let's take the L and let's put it right here. And let's see if order matters, right? So we're taking out the L. So that means that here, these, this one and this one, if order mattered, then maybe that these don't get taken out. If order doesn't matter, then we'll see the exact same string as we saw here. So go ahead and rerun this. And we find out that order doesn't matter. It's just looking at all the characters that are in here. And then as it removes some from the end, if, if they're there, if they're, if they're there, if they're at an end, if they could be at an end's position. So that is the strip function. It, that is how you can use it with characters. That is how you can um, use it. Typically, a lot of times you'll see people just do this so they can take something that looks like this or something that looks just like, you know, slash n. And if we go ahead and rerun it, you'll see that again, it's just, just those. Um, and then if you're using characters remove, it'll remove them from the end and you get something that looks just like that. So I hope you found this helpful. Um, if you have any comments, please leave them in the question or in the, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. Um, don't forget to subscribe and until next time, keep on programming.